Metroid 2 Return of Samus is a game that stepped up upon its predecessor, introduced staples in the franchise, and set up what is arguably the most important plot point in the entire series. Yet at the same time, it was always seen as the black ship of the 2D Metroid games, and for a good reason. It was more linear than before, the boss battles against the titular Metroids were repetitive, the soundtrack was bare bones, and most importantly, it was made in the original Game Boy. That last port is not a bad thing, and it's neither the game's fault. But in recent times that's rarely an appeal, and thus not many people even try to get into Return of Samus. It's kinda like the first game. Why would you choose it when Zero Mission exists? Unless you love retro-style adventures, which is a perfectly understandable motive, there's no reason to do that. However, all that changed when two new faces came in and turned people's mentalities around. AM2R, known as Another Metroid 2 Remake, and Metroid Samus Returns. Games that aim to give Return of Samus new life, but did so in different ways. There's a cool story behind the relationship of these two games. AM2R is a fan game made by Milton Guasti, an Argentinian developer from Argentina. Wow, I thought the Argentinian guy was from Puerto Rico. He set out to make Return of Samus have the feel of Zero Mission, with the visual style and atmosphere from Super Metroid. This was an easy task, as AM2R was created over the course of 10 years! Long story short, the development was filled with ups and downs. With long hiatus, volunteer work from freelance artists and programmers, and of course, Milton's personal life. And it wasn't until 2016, on the series' 30th anniversary, that they aimed to a release to the public, with much well-deserved praise and critical acclaim from both fans and gaming websites. However, this celebration wouldn't last long, because shortly after its release, Nintendo sent a DMCA to Milton, forcing him and many websites to take down links to download the game. It's tragic, but remember, if it's on the internet, it will stay there. Now it's just as easy as searching online and hitting the download button to play AM2R. Nintendo, on the other hand, was met with a lot of backlash and fan criticism for the DMCA. But this action somewhat made more sense a year later when they announced their own remake, Metroid Samus Returns for the 3DS, developed by Mercury Steam, who were previously known for their work on the Castlevania Lords of Shadow series. Samus Returns will release a few months later, once again, to much positive reception from fans and critics alike, even winning a few awards on multiple events. Although both games were a success in many ways, that naturally brought off people arguing which is the definitive version of Metroid 2. AM2R left such an impact that many consider it the true remake, even though, you know, Samus Returns is the official one. So that's what I will tackle on this video. I went on to play both games back to back to make sure I can understand their strengths and weaknesses and see why some people are so divisive in regards of which one is superior. It should be noted that despite their differences, both games set out with one goal in mind. To retell and modernize the story of how Samus Aran wiped out the Metroids in Planet SR388. But the most intriguing part is what means they took to achieve it, because each game is a totally unique experience. I will start with the AM2R, because I have to admit, until this video I had never touched this before. I'm not much to play fan games, but since this is a prominent debate within one of my favorite franchises, I thought it was finally time to give it a shot, and to the surprise of nobody, I was genuinely impressed! It's like AM2R combines two of my favorite Metroid games to create something spectacular! It has perfect controls. All that responsiveness and speed I love from Zero Mission is here, as well as some nice new features. The map design accommodates to these changes to ensure that the experience is seamless, fast-paced, and fun. There's rarely a moment where it feels it slows down. Maybe except for these areas where all you do is walking, not the worst thing ever, mind you, but I noticed they were quite common. As a long-time Metroid fan, you have no idea how easy it was for me to get used to the gameplay. It was a second nature on my fingers. 
I had next to no issue in exploration, platforming or combat. Soon enough I was pulling off shit like the wall jump, the bomb jump, and I could even use the tractor beam from the Prime series to bring pickups to me. Only time I had problems was with the Shine Spark, but that is only because I couldn't use the D-pad on a PS4 controller for some reason. So trying to do these tricks on an analog stick was quite hard. But still, in time I got used to it, and there I was, going left and right, killing Metroids, filling as much of the map as possible, and finding upgrades all thanks to the controls. But this mobility came at a price. Well, depending on who you are. You know, if I tell you that this game is from Metroid fans to Metroid fans, take that quite literally, because if for some reason you decide to jump into the series with AM2R, you might suffer. It's quite challenging in many aspects, for example, the bosses. Right from the get-go, you'll realize they are not here to fuck around. One of my biggest worries was having monotonous battles against the Metroids, but that wasn't the case. They all got a much better AI, more means to attack you, and most of the arenas where you fight are different. So not only are they harder, they keep themselves fresh. AM2R emphasize well how much of a threat the Metroids are, because they will test you. Maybe except the Gamma Metroids, I found them to be super exploitable. A stark contrast for things I'll mention later. I also hate this specific Zeta Metroid fight that had these balls that prevent you from shooting. That one actually sucked. And it's not just Metroids you'll find. AM2R created its own unique bosses. I loved that because I just never knew what to expect. And the battles themselves were crazy. Maybe too crazy at times. I don't know, this boss in the tower was so frantic, it made me think I was playing Toho. I've never played Toho before. That's not a complaint though. I love me a good battle that challenges me. And here, I was more than satisfied. But the difficulty is not just from the enemies, it also comes from the exploration itself. More often than not, you'll be asked to think outside of the box to get an upgrade, sometimes even just to proceed. You have to be familiar with how 2D Metroid works and have enough skill to beat the game, because it's not as easy as other entries, which takes me to my next point. AM2R has that freedom that defines Super Metroid in my eyes. It's still limited a bit because of Return of Samus's in its structure, where you can't proceed unless you kill a certain number of Metroids in a specific area, but honestly, I don't see that as an issue anymore, because yeah, even though you can't freely explore all the planet, proceeding through the game is not a matter of hand-holding. You still have to find the upgrades yourself through instinct and exploration, and then use that knowledge to wipe out all the Metroids. For me, am 2 our spacing felt like a mix of Super and Fusion. Your progress may be restricted at times, like in Fusion, but what you do in that area and how you do the objectives there feels entirely up to you, like in Super. What I like is that am 2 our isn't just Metroid 2 with cool shit from other games. It tries to be something more, and it does it well, actually. There's the bosses I just mentioned, but that's not the only thing that was added. In essence, the story remains the same, wipe out all the Metroids and find the missing Galactic Federation soldiers, which, surprise, don't survive. But the AM2R adds more, as it brings back the log entries from the Prime series. It's entirely optional stuff, but it's cool to see how the game goes the extra mile to feel like a real, genuine entry that Nintendo will make. There's enemy descriptions, the Death GF soldiers have diary entries, the existence of every area you visit is explained to you through these logs. You have power-ups that didn't exist in the original, and there's now a fully functional map that even tells you where you can find upgrades. And speaking of, I love how AM2R makes the SR388 planet feel livelier. Back in Metroid 2, the place was nothing but a cavern. It made sense because you're always going down and because of the Game Boy's limitations, but here, Every area has its own tone, and the variety is commendable. There's research stations, factories, temples, and many more. Each area having their own challenges, while being memorable at the same time. 
The sprite work also helps with that, I mean, what can I say? I love how Samus looks, her animations are incredible, the backgrounds are beautiful, and the Metroids are nothing short of menacing. I find their animations to be a bit bizarre, and I can't put my finger on as to why. But regardless, everything looks great. And same thing for the soundtrack, Metroid 2 barely had any recognizable tunes, but here there's nothing but good remixes all over the place. AM2R is a game that really knows what defines the series. It takes the best aspects of different games and blends them together to make an adventure that, while not official, can easily fit into one of your favorite Metroids, and it's no wonder so many fans can prefer it over the 3DS remake. It's well designed, has great pacing, and it's incredibly fun. That's not to say Samus Returns is without merits, on the contrary! You know, when I first beat the M2R, I was left so impressed I thought I would be more biased towards it. But this playthrough I did for Samus Returns made me appreciate it more. Which is saying a lot, because I've always liked this game! Samus Returns achieves the same objective of bringing new life to Metroid 2, but not in the same way. While AM2R felt more like Zero Mission and Super, this one has a different feel, so it's hard to compare it to something. And just to get that out of the way, I won't be spending too much time on the production values, because I'll only be repeating myself. The graphics are excellent for 3DS standards, the music is pretty much remix tracks from previous entries, very good stuff of course. Every area was revamped to make SR388 more organic, there's a lot of quality of life changes, more bosses, upgrades that weren't in the original game, and the updated visuals, along with great music, deliver on that Metroid atmosphere. The biggest difference between the two lies in the gameplay. Samus returns controls just as good as other entries, but added three new features that for me, stand out above the rest. The free aim, which lets players, well, aim in any possible direction which gave combat and puzzle solving an extra degree of depth. A counter maneuver was added to deflect attacks and expose enemies to dish out massive damage. And unlike other M's sense move, this one is not spammable, so perfect timing is key to master this technique. And finally there's the Aeon abilities, which come in different flavors. The scan pulls that fills part of the map and also exposes breakable blocks the lighting armor that prevents damage and enhances the melee counter, the beam burst that turns your arm cannon into a fucking machine gun, and the face drift that slows down time around you. The coolest part about them is that they feel like an extension of Samus's abilities. Sure, there are times when they're mandatory to progress or get an upgrade, but even in combat or just exploring, they're always there if you want to use them. Having a tough time against the boss? The lighting armor can help you to survive longer. Can time well the jumps against the digger knot? Use face drift if you can get away with it. And it's not just the Aeon abilities. All the upgrades you get in this game will never fall off in usage. The grapple beam, the screw attack, the spider ball. They remain useful from the moment you get them until you finish the game. To achieve this, the map went through a lot of changes. AM2R was more loyal to the original game. But Samus Returns had to revamp a lot of areas to add challenges that make full use of all your abilities. Personally, I love it! But this is the point that divides AM2R and Samus Returns. The latter clearly expanded more on the Metroid formula, which is great! But in consequence it also brought off problems that divided the fans. If you were to ask me, what's my biggest criticism about Samus Returns? I'd say it's slower and a bit repetitive. But that doesn't ruin the experience for me, let me elaborate. Out of all the new stuff included in this game, I'm sure many of us can agree the melee counter is the most polarizing mechanic. On one hand, smacking an enemy in its face and pulverizing it with your weapons is incredibly satisfying, love that shit! But on the other, this mechanic is a very big deal. Enemies in Samus Returns are very resilient on top of being super aggressive. What's better? Shoot at the most generic monster a few times, or uppercut it so you can defeat it in one shot! Melee counter is a very good mechanic, especially with the bosses. But with regular enemies, that's where the problem lies. Because you cannot use it while moving, so it's a lot of stop, counter, shoot and move. 
stop, counter, shoot, and move. And here's another criticism I have. The enemy placement can be pretty bullshit at times. I lost account of how many times I got hit because two enemies attack at different times and I was still recovering from a melee counter animation. And just to let you know, the game is just as difficult as AM2R, perhaps even more. So getting hurt here is not recommended. But here's the thing. I find this problem prominent only in the first few areas of the game. Because as soon as you get weapons like the wave beam which goes through walls, you can surprise enemies before they get a chance to see you. Now add the spacer and plasma beams and you can run and shoot like the good old times. That's not to mention other options you get like the power bombs or screw attack which are just as effective and keep the pace going. With this I'm not pretending it's not a huge deal, first impressions are very important. So if your first moments are slow, especially in a Metroid game, that can get you in trouble. And even after that problem tones down, other factors also slow down the game and make it feel a bit repetitive. Like the enemy variety. Samus returns his victim to the ideology that in order to make more enemies, you take weaker ones, color them different, and make them hit harder. That feels lazy. There's also the Chosu stations, where you have to save, restore health, and restock on missiles on three different locations, while watching a small cutscene every time. Personally, I'm not too bothered by it, because that's how it was handled in other games. But after playing AM2R, where save stations can restore your health and ammunition, that got me thinking. Hey! How come that isn't a thing yet? Again, I'm not too bothered by it, but it does make sense as to why it slows down the pace at times. But that's nothing compared to what I consider to be, without a doubt, the worst part of Samus Returns. Gamma Metroids. I hate them, I fucking hate them. Remember how I said in AM2R they were easily exploitable? Well, here they fucking suck. Why, you may ask? Because they are the only enemies that can flee from battle. And when it happens, because it will happen, it's so fucking annoying. Yeah, there are ways to prevent that, like freezing their stomachs or killing them in one round with a melee counter, but that's easier said than done. Their AI won't always be in your favor. Or if you screw up once, better get ready to keep chase. And since Gammas can move to other rooms, extra areas were created to make more arenas to battle them. But problem is, these rooms contain nothing, so if you don't get the room where the Metroid is on your first try, you're just exploring empty rectangles wasting your time. And this wouldn't be so much of an issue if it was just one battle. But no, Gammas are the second most common bosses you'll encounter. Alphas may be PCC, but they don't drag on. Seiras and Omegas can drain your health in seconds and have longer battles. But A, there's not a gorillion of them. And B, the challenge they give is enough to keep me stimulated while having fun at the same time. Gamma Metroid single-handedly path the game. They suck, they're repetitive, let's move on. It's very obvious that I complain more about Samus Returns than AM2R. And it's true. The game is slower and the problems are more notable. That can't be denied. But Samus Returns is a game I still hold dearly, and I won't lie. While it's not my favorite in the franchise, it still holds some meaning for me, for what it does and what it represents. I've been a Metroid fan for years, but I got in around a time where the series was at its lowest point. Other M was the last game to release, and you already know how I feel about that one. And years later, I witnessed the tsunami of hatred that was Federation Force, followed by the controversy of AM2R getting a DMCA. It was a time where it felt like I got in on a sinking boat and just didn't know if it would ever float again. But then everything changed. I was there when Prime 4 and Samus Returns were announced. I was there when Ridley and Dark Samus made it into Super Smash Bros. I lost my shit like a kid on Christmas. <laughs> when I eventually got my hands on Samus Returns, I just couldn't believe it. I was genuinely experiencing a new Metroid adventure. A remake, I know. But I felt I was witnessing the next step in the series.
I fucking love the opening of Samus Returns. I remember getting chills listening to the Super Metroid theme while reading it. And when I saw that art of Samus getting ready for action, how she descends upon the planet, and then I heard that iconic fanfare... I felt right at home. I just knew I was gonna experience something good. And it was really fucking good! It's funny, because despite not being my favorite entry in the series, this game just does it for me. Do you know what I love the most about it? Samus's portrayal. Mercury's team fully understands why she's such a beloved character. You don't need to interrupt the game with shitty melodramatic cutscenes. Her actions do more than words, and that is exemplified throughout the adventure. That part where she kills the digger nut without looking at it. How she never lowers her guard when Ridley seems to be defeated. It's so fucking satisfying when you counter a boss because she looks so fucking cool. I can't get enough of that cutscene when she meets the baby Metroid. All these things tell me more about her than other M did without a single line of dialogue. And it didn't stop there, because it also did two more things to me. It canonized the Prime series thanks to Proteus Ridley so the Nyers can shut the fuck up now, but also showed me there was still a future for the series. And you can't imagine how happy that makes me! Well, maybe you can. Yes! At the end of the day, AM2R and Samus Returns are great games I appreciate. This might be a versus video, but unlike previously, I don't think I can show a clear winner this time. These are Metroid games that make me, a Metroid fan, very happy. But I think I can understand why some people argue about them. Think about it. With AM2R, there's barely any negatives gameplay-wise because it takes a winning formula and merges the better aspects of other games. Meanwhile, Samus Returns is more of a natural evolution of the series. It's trying new stuff, therefore it's not perfect. So in consequence, the problems stick out more. Especially if you compare it to AM2R. There's also something more. I honestly believe that Nintendo's actions played a big part on this long-time debate. Nintendo legally took down AM2R during a time where they seemed to actively try to kill the series, so that naturally got a lot of fans angry. Even though we got an official remake a year later, Samus Returns is inherently more flawed than AM2R. So combine those two facts, and it's easy to see why many consider the latter to be the quote-unquote true remake. Look, if you don't like any of these two because they're not your cup of tea, that's fine, I can respect that. But to outright say that Samus Returns is bad because AM2R doesn't have many flaws, or say that AM2R sucks because it's not official, that's stupid. I have always found that mentality pretty dumb. Just because you prefer one of two popular things, doesn't mean you have to hate the other one by default. It's like if you ask me, do you prefer Pokemon Black and White, one or two? I prefer the first entry for what it means to me, but I still adore and respect Black and White 2 and consider them some of the best Pokemon games out there. Be more like Milton, he developed AM2R for 10 years and was overjoyed when Samus Returns came to be. He said, and I quote, Nintendo won E3 for me. Samus Returns looks like the Metroid 2 I always wanted to play. Looks like another part of AM2R still makes sense now. Oh, by the way, he got a happy ending. He was approached by Moon Studios and helped to make Ori and the Will of the Wisps. So good for him. You know what I noticed while making this video? That every time Nintendo takes down a fan game, they make their own official version sometime later. They took down AM2R, and then released Samus Returns. They took down a Mario Battle Royale, and then made Super Mario 35. And last time I checked, they took down a Princess Peach sex game, so that means...